Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this. Okay, let's just get right into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is in a new scene. If we just uh, press X and get rid of the default cube, um, and in fact, I'm going to get rid of everything in the scene just so we can start from scratch. So the first thing I want to do is uh, set up the kind of like sun orb thing. And um, that's quite easily done. We just press shift A and add in a icosphere with uh, two subdivisions. And then you're gonna to wanna to shift D to duplicate it and then just click to set that in place and then use S to scale it in um, just so it's inside the original icosphere. Uh, and let me just turn on my screencast keys here. Okay, so with this outer uh, icosphere, if we come into the modifier tab and we can add in a wireframe modifier and then just increase the thickness of this to kind of whatever you like. And then if we add in a bevel modifier, that'll just make it um, a bit more sci-fi, kind of flatten it out. Um, you can kind of play with this, put as many segments in it as you want. Um, I think this will be fine though, let's have a look. I know it's about there. Um, and then for the inner sphere, I'm just gonna do a very basic version of my sun shader. Um, there won't be as much detail in it as that sun shader, but you kind of, you get the kind of look of it. Um, I'll put a link up in the corner for the sun shader tutorial if you do wanna look in how to do this uh, even better. Um, but we're just going to delete the principal BSDF on this shader that I've just created. And I'll just call this Sun Shader. And then I'm going to, uh, I, pressed, I pressed Shift A to add in a new emission shader, plug that into the surface. Press Shift A again, get a color ramp, plug this into the emission shader, and then come over here and then add in a Musgrave texture, and then plug that into the factor there. Um, so now if we go over to the, uh, actually I'm going to go over to rendered view um, and then I'm just going to make sure this is in EV and I'm going to click on bloom um, I'll just reduce the intensity for now and then I'm just going to save this file uh, just so we don't get any of those pesky uh, blender crashes. Uh, let's have a look, so let's we'll call this animated uh, sci-fi ocean scene sci-fi ocean scene Tut. there we go so i'll just save that there um so with this emission shader because we're in um rendered mode here you'll see that as we bring this up uh, with bloom checked on we do get this like the kind of nice glow on this uh just to emphasize it a bit more i'm just going to turn down the background uh, and then we'll just bring up this shader just to get a nice big glow. So the way this Musgrave texture is working is it is just a black and white texture plugged into the emission. Anything that's black is not glowing, anything that white it is glowing. But because we've plugged this into the color and not the strength, we can just use this to change the color of the uh, emission. So on the black side of the color ramp, we're just gonna wanna uh, bring up a little bit of color just so we can see what we're working with and we want to get a bit of a uh, kind of a dark red like this and then um, on the top end we do want it white and I'm just going to increase the scale and then up the detail and then reduce the dimension just to get that kind of broken up sort of effect and then I'm going to add in a, another color and then kind of put this to a nice orange and you can see that already kind of looks like the sun um, I'm just going to bring this uh, kind of to here and then I'm going to bring in another uh, marker I'm going to make this yellow this time bring this up to this end of the scale um, I might dial this in a little bit there and then just on this bottom end I'm just going to put a bit of red into it um, let's see maybe to about there Okay, so I'm just going to press Shift A and just save this. Uh, and then whilst I'm in the shader editor, I'm just going to go over to the, uh, come up here and go to World. And then with the background, with Node Wrangler enabled, which you can go up to Edit Preferences, 
add-ons, just search for Node Wrangler, you probably all know this by now, um, but make sure that's checked. With the background node selected, press Ctrl T, that plugs in a HDRI map. Uh, and then you're gonna to wanna to go over to this website, kind of like a HDRI Haven, um, find a free HDRI that, uh, yeah, you come up here, click HDRIs, and then kind of pick one that you like the look of. You might wanna go for a starry one. Um, there's a couple of that nice nighttime ones. Uh, you get one of the sun, let's have a look. But you just pick one of these. I'm gonna go with the one that I used last time, uh, which is this which I believe was this HDRI back dawn, backlighting Kiara, that's 8K. I'm gonna go for the 4K one. That was taken from HDRI Haven, so you can be able to find that one on there. Uh, and I'm just gonna bring this up to sort of 0 0.3, just so it gets some light in there, but not uh, too much. And you can see the sun is kind of there, that's where the light's coming from. Um, with this here, you can use this to rotate, oh, that's the location. Uh, you can rotate the HDRI around with this, if you, in your final scene, if you don't want the mountains in the background, you could just rotate it uh, down. Let's have a look on the Y axis. You could just rotate it down and then the mountains would go, but you'd still get the nice light in. Uh, just for now though, I'm gonna bring them all back to uh, zero. Um, okay, so the next thing is this outer sphere. We wanna give this like a nice metallic texture just to get some of the reflections from in here. Um, so I'm going to go back over to Object with the outer icosphere selected, and I'm going to add in a new material and just call this like metal cage. Scroll out, find the principled BSDF, and then I'm just going to it's metallic. I'm going to reduce the roughness. Um, I mean, because it's so far away in the background, that's kind of all you need to do for this. You could maybe make it um, a color, just give it like a blue tint kind of like that if you wanted. But if you come down to the material settings, uh, just check on screen space refraction, and that'll just give um, a bit more reflections to the metal. And you just need to come back over to the render sense here and click screen space reflections there as well. Um, okay, so the next thing is, uh, I'm just gonna add in a camera now just so we can set up uh, the rest of the scale of the scene. So I'm gonna press shift A, and then come down to camera, and then I'm just going to press zero on the number pad to go into the camera and then press shift and uh, apostrophe just to fly that camera back. Um, and you use WAS and D kind of like a video game just to move this back to kind of around about here. Uh, and then with the camera selected, I'm just going to go to the camera settings, turn on uh, depth field and then pick the icosphere as my uh, focus object. And then I'm just going to reduce the uh, f-stop just slightly and then I'm um, going to increase the focal length a little bit kind of to about there I'm going to come back over to um, my output properties and just swap these around or oh, no actually I'm going to make them square like this so it's going to be a nice Instagram post uh, and then I think what I might do is I'm going to select the camera press N to bring up this side panel here and I'm just going to uh, put the Z to 90 degrees, the Y to zero degrees, and the X to 90 degrees. And that's just gonna turn this, uh, just to make sure it's pointing directly forward. And then for the Y axis, I'm gonna put that to zero just so it's centered with the icosphere. And then with the Z, I'll bring that down to zero as well. And let's just see what that looks like. So that should be centered uh, with the icosphere. I'm just gonna press Alt and G on them just to make sure they're centered. Um, yeah, I think that is centered in the frame, but the mountains are kind of throwing it off, um, so that should be fine. I'm going to click the camera again, just to make sure that's selected. And then I'm going to come down to the camera tab, under viewport display. I'm going to go to pass part out and just drag that up, just so we kind of cut away what we don't need there. I'm just going to bring this in, press N and T, just so I can see what I'm, just so, so I can see the whole kind of camera here. And then I'm going to come back over to the, three, the 3D viewport. Uh, press N to get rid of that side panel. And then I'm gonna add in a circle. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and then add in a mesh circle. And then press seven on the number pad to come down to the top view, and then press S just to scale this up. Um, maybe to about there. And I'm gonna press Control A and apply that scale. And I'm gonna go into edit mode, 
select the uh, and then in vertex select mode up here I'm going to select half of the vertices and press X and then delete them and then I'm going to select everything and then press R Y uh, so then with everything selected I'm just going to turn the um, the transform just over to the 3D cursor whilst that's in the center. Then I can press RY 90, and that just stands it up and rotates it around this center point um, with all them selected. And then just before I forget, I'm gonna swap that back over to uh, median point. Um, so now, if we press E with all the vertices selected and just scale that back, uh, sorry, extrude that back on the X axis, and then if we go into face select mode, press A and then press Alt N and then just flip those normals just so they're pointing inwards like this. Um, you might want to come up here and turn on back face culling and that shows you which way the normals are pointing. I want them pointing inwards. Um, and so that's with the back face culling option and just you see through the back faces um, of an object. So now with all the faces selected, I'm going to press A to select them all and then press Alt E and then extrude faces along normals uh, and just bring that in that way and then just check around with back face calling turned on that I can't see through the objects so everything's pointing the correct way which it is uh, so that's great um, so the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in a bevel modifier uh, I'm going to give this two segments and then just reduce the offset just so it um, provides some supporting loops to these edges here. I'm going to limit the method to angle and bring this up just to about like 65 just to make sure it's only uh, beveling these edges and not this edge. And then with my object selected I can press Control 2 and that just adds in a subdivision modifier and then that keeps it all um, and then the bevel modifier has kept this kind of the geometry good. If we get rid of that it becomes this kind of weird uh, sausage shape. Uh, you might want that. It's kind of a bit more of an organic shape, but I want the kind of like flat, kind of like rock shape. And I'm just gonna right click shade smooth and then come down to the uh, object data properties, come to normals and then just check on auto smooth just to clear up any shading issues. And then again, bump it up to about 85. Okay, so I can't actually see this uh, in the camera yet. So I'm going to press G with the camera selected, X, and then just bring this back to about here. Um, okay, so then I'm going to, I've brought the camera back, and I'm going to drag this, um, going to get the kind of arch here, and then just bring this towards the camera just so it's kind of visible about there. And then actually, I'm going to get my camera, press GZ, and just bring this up uh, just slightly. So now with this archway selected, I'm going to uh, add in an array modifier towards the end. And then I'm just going to, I want it to go along the X axis, but I want it to go the other direction. So I'm going to bring this to sort of minus 10 and then just add in just a lot of these, just to send them off into the distance. Uh, with the camera selected, if you see that stuff starts to disappear in the distance, you might want to uh, introduce, you might want to just up the clipping here uh, so if I bring this down to 100, which it sometimes defaults at, uh, that hasn't done anything. Let's have a look. So you can see the clip in there that uh, the camera can only see now 42 meters ahead of it. So that kind of, it starts to cut off any objects that are further than 30, 42 meters. Um, so you see here, you can kind of just see that in effect here. So. Um, we want this up to, I think a thousand usually works quite well. Um, and I'm actually gonna, I don't like how, just quite how blurry these are. I want them a bit more in focus. So I'm just gonna get the f-stop and then maybe bump that up to two. Um, yeah, and then we can play with a composition uh, a bit in a second when, once we add in the ocean. Um, I'm just gonna bring this forward on the x-axis kind of to about there maybe. That'll do sort of for now. Uh, and then I might actually grab my icospheres and just scale these up just so they're a bit more uh, just so they're a bit more encompassed within this circle. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my 
arches and then I'm going to go back into edit mode uh, come into the modifiers I'm just going to turn off the subdivision uh, modifier for just a second um, with in edge select mode I'm going to press Control R and then just add in a couple um, of edge loops here so how many was that? That was seven. Uh, let's have a look. Then I want to go into face select mode and then press Alt and click on this edge here and then hold Shift and Alt and then click on these edges here. So that's not enough. So I'm going to just press Control Z and undo this. I'm just going to add in um, eight cuts uh, and that'll just give me an even amount to press Alt and Shift, Alt and Shift. Sorry, this is in face select mode. Press Alt and Shift, Alt Shift, Alt Shift. Alt Shift, and then press Alt and E to extrude along the normals, and then I'm just going to bring them in, sort of like that, and then I'm going to add in uh, the subdivision modifier again, just to see how that looks. So now I've got this kind of ribbed effect to my um, arches. Again, this this is just personal preference. You might not want that. Um, because you see the front side here, you may want to go back into uh, face select mode, press Control R, kind of do a similar thing on the front face inside if you wanted. So you could come in here and then Alt Shift, select those loops, maybe extrude these in. See my computer's uh, struggling with that, but you might want to do something like that. Uh, I'm going to undo that just because my computer didn't like it. I'm going to go back to this and then for now I'm just going to turn off the subdivision modifier just so um, it's not showing in the viewport which you can do by checking that little box there. Okay now I'm going to drag down another window from up here and then I'm going to come up here and then press S to go into the shader tab open up a new material and just call this archway maybe and then I'm going to, I want it to be a kind of like a concrete sort of uh, look so I'm going to up the roughness I'm going to give it a kind of grey colour and then I'm going to press shift A and add in a musgrave texture again I'm just going to plug this into the roughness actually um, and then I'm going to crank the detail up, reduce the dimension and then press shift A and add in a colour ramp click that there uh, let's have a look here. So, so if we plug in the Musgrave texture to the color ramp uh, and just zoom in a bit here, you can see that it's got a bit of a reflection, which we don't want. We want it to be rough. So I'm going to get the black of this color ramp, and then I'm just going to increase that just to make it um, kind of like a just a very kind of more white than gray. And then I'm going to hover over this color and press Control C. Then I'm going to click the white and then press Control V to paste it. And I'm just going to up it. The color just slightly and then it just gives like a kind of rough uh, kind of look to that and then I'm going to take my color ramp here just bring it back and I'm going to press shift a and add in a bump node and then I'm going to take this normal plug it into the normal and then the height from the Musgrave texture into the height of the bump map and then I'm just going to click here and then bring this down to sort of 0 0.05 let's just try that now let's maybe just start with one uh, no sorry uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, there you go, that just gives it kind of uh, a nice rough kind of texture. Um, it's gone less concrete-y, it looks a bit more plasticky, but I mean, I think for the purposes of this it looks nice. Just add in the subdivision modifier, let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. Um, I'm gonna with the arches selected, I'm just going to come down to the material tab and then just turn on screen space reflections for them as well. Um, press Control S and save. One of the last things to do is put in the ocean. Um, so I'm going to press Shift A, add in a mesh plane. Um, it doesn't matter about the size or where it's placed really. Um, you kind of want it in the middle of your scene though, I suppose. Uh, then you come over to the modifier tab, add in a modifier, and choose uh, generate and then uh, sorry, physics and then ocean. And you see that this brings in this, uh, it generates an ocean based on that plane. Um, I'm just going to press G and X and just bring that forward just so it's kind of in the position of the camera, it like fills the frame of the camera. And then I'm going to repeat it um, on the X, I guess. 
Alright, I'm going to press RZ uh, 180 just to flip it around so then when I repeat on the X it goes backwards into the distance. Uh, once it goes to past a sort of about 3, you can't really tell the difference, so I'm just going to leave it at 3. Um, and then I want it to fill the edges of the frame here, so I'm going to press G and Y just to bring it over. And then I'm going to add in uh, resolution on the Y, and it looks like it's going the other way. So I'm just going to bring that here. Um, press G and X, just bring that back. Let's have a look. Um, Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera up slightly. Um, depth, uh, size. Um, under waves, uh, the scale here, this chooses kind of how rough the uh, ocean is. You obviously, it goes a bit odd. Um, depending on how, you can have it quite calm if you wanted, or if you wanted a bit rougher, um, you can do that here. Uh, what the time does is that kind of just simulates time. So as as that goes on, the water kind of moves as you would have, uh, as you would think. Um, so I'm just going to set that back to zero, uh, and then come here into the uh, animation. And then I'm going to say that I want this animation to be 10 seconds long at 30 frames a second, which is uh, 300. So on frame one, with my ocean selected, I'm going to press. Um, I over the time thing after setting it to zero and then I'm going to press this button here to go to frame 300 set this to one and then press I again and then with my mouse over the timeline I'm going to press A T and then set this to linear and as you can see when we play that back the ocean kind of just moves slightly uh, what I might do is go back to frame 300 and set this to maybe two just to give uh, a bit more movement to that water. Yep, that seems to work fine. Um, so with the ocean selected, I'm gonna come up to new, call this water, and I'm gonna bring up the transmission to one, put the IRO at 1.33, and then just gonna give this uh, maybe like a, a greeny sort of blue color. And then I'm going to bring the roughness down to zero, uh, maybe just 0 0.05, just to give it a little bit of roughness. Um, that's up to you. Again, that you can kind of choose there um, how you want that to appear. With the ocean selected, if we go back over to the modifiers tab here, um, we can change the apparent depth of the water. So if you want to kind of, if you want it to be almost shallow. Uh, you can bring this over. You can kind of see it's just aids in sort of the refraction of the water. So obviously the deeper the water, the more light would be absorbed by it. I think that's the kind of math there. Uh, I'm just going to say it's a hundred meters deep. Um, and you get this like the nice kind of wobbles here. Press Control S and then save. Uh, and then just for the sake of my computer not blowing up, I'm going to select the ocean um, and then just hide it for the time being because we now want um, uh, the particles to come in. So if we press Shift A and add in a force field and vortex, um, you'll have seen this in my last two videos. Uh, I'm just a bit obsessed with doing this at the minute because it just looks so nice. Um, press RY, just rotate it, and then RZ, and then rotate it. Let me scale it back in a bit. And then just while we've got it selected, I'm just going to set this up now. If you come down to the physics properties, and I'm just going to set this to 0 0.25, um, and I'll explain what that does in a second. Um, okay, so the next thing to do is if you grab your inner icosphere that's solid and doesn't have any of the uh, modifiers on it, press Shift D to duplicate it, and then immediately click the left mouse button to sort of leave it in place. And you just want to scale that up I'm just going to make sure that did it, yep. Um, just scale that up, kind of encompassing the scene a little bit. And then get rid of the sun shader, just click off, it doesn't need a shader. Um, and then we're going to come over to the particle settings and then add in a new particle system. Uh, we want it to be a emitter. We want end to be 200 um, and the lifetime to be 100. If you want to know what these values do, I'll cover them in a bit more detail in the um, 
in the Sketchfab video and also the DNA video. So I'm not going to go over what they do again. Um, just these values work. Um, and then I'm going to come over here, just out of the scene somewhere, and just press Shift uh, right click to add in the 3D cursor. And then I'm going to press Shift A and then add in a mesh icosphere again with two subdivisions. I'm going to right click, shade smooth. And then I'm going to uh, scale this down, press Control A and add the scale, just so we've made it a bit smaller. And then I'm going to add in a new material, call this um, particle. I'm going to come up here, get rid of the principal BSDF, press Shift A, add in an emission shader again, connect this up here, um, and then I'm going to add in, uh, I'm going to make them kind of nice orangey colour. Just go into rendered mode over here just so I can see this. Uh, add in a nice orangey colour, kind of give it a bit of a glow like that. So now with our icosphere selected again, what we want to do is we want to come over to render, uh, unchecks show emitter, and then with uh, render as, select that, go object, and then use the pipette to pick our icosphere particle. Um, so you can see that that's now updated. Uh, you can see that our icosphere's got these glowing particles all over it. And what we want to do is, in the particle settings, under source, um, we could emit this from the volume, so that emits them kind of within itself instead of on the outside. And then we just want to change a couple of settings here. We want to go into velocity and change this to 0 0.2. And then um, under field weights, we just want to turn off gravity. And then what that's going to do is when we go back and we click play, you won't see anything because they're all inside the volume of it. But you can see now that as we've pressed play, the particles are spawn in the middle and then the they get pulled in by the vertex and they get flown around the vertex and that's kind of what that's doing there. So you see that they're going kind of this direction. If we rotated um, if we rotated this field, the vortex we made, you'll see that they'll go in the direction of the spiral. Um, and it's a bit of annoyance with uh, it's a bit of an annoyance with Blender at the minute. So with a particle setting, um, this is our emitter. If we go over to particles and then we've unchecked uh, show emitter, you'd think that it should really disappear in this scene. But if you um, render the image, you'll see that there is there and that this emitter is hidden. It's not being shown. That's why we unchecked that. But that just doesn't reflect in the rendered view of um, of Blender. With the icosphere selected, if you do want to kind of hide it from the scene, you can come up to visibility, uh, sorry, viewport display, and then instead of display as textured, you can say bounds. But then you'll see that the particles display as bounds as well. So then it's kind of, sure, you can see all the particles, but you don't see the full effect. Um, but you can see what they're doing. And then you can come up to render, render image, and you'll see that the R there, um, it's just a bit of a pain with um, Blender acting funny and not kind of giving you an option to hide the emitter but still show the particles. Okay, we're nearly done. Um, I just want to bring in my ocean again. Um, and with it selected, I'm just going to go over to the um, material settings and then just check on screen space reflections again. Um, and then undo the render settings under screen space reflections. Uh, I just want to turn off half res trace and what that's going to do is it's just going to improve uh, this, this reflection here. If I uncheck the half res trace you'll see that the quality improves, um, only slightly but I think it definitely helps to have that unchecked. This is more intensive on your computer. Um, this is more intensive on the computer, though. So if you have a sort of slower computer, you might want to leave that half res traced. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that is our animation done almost. The one last thing we want to do is we want the particles to not just disappear. We want them to fade out. Um, we want them to sort of appear slowly and then fade out slowly, as if like they were em embers, kind of dying. Um, I'm just going to set this back, the force field back to how I how I like it kind of, so it's that way. Um, so you'll see that they come around and they swirl into the center. Um, 
I'm just going to select our icosphere that's the emitter, uh, the particle emitter. I'm just going to name this emitter just so I know uh, which one it is. Then under the particle settings, I'm just going to scroll all the way down, come to textures, textures, add in a new texture. I'm just going to call this um, fade, particle fade. You can just leave it as textures and really matter. Uh, I'm going to click this button here to go over to the texture. And then with type, I'm going to swap this over to blend. Under uh, coordinates, I'm going to swap that to strand particle. And then under colors, just going to come down here, uh, check on the color ramp. Uh, I'm going to click the black color ramp uh, point here, and I'm just going to click it and then just bring up the alpha just to make that fully black, not transparent. And then I'm going to bring in the white to the middle, and then I'm going to press it. Uh, I'm going to add a new color stop. I'm going to drag that over and make that black. So this is going to control the scale of the particles. So anything that's black will be a scale of zero, so they won't be seen. Anything that's white will be a scale of one, so they will be seen, and then it'll go back to black. Um, and the way you do this is once this is set up, if you come under Influence, uncheck General Time, and check in Size. So now, it'd be, it might be hard to see um, because of the bounds, so uh, I'm just going to make just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to make the particles really big. Um, obviously, this will look a bit crap, so you won't want to keep that like that. Um, but now, as we play our, but now as we play our animation, you can see the particles they scale up to their full size and they scale back down to their lower size. So they don't just ping out of existence; they they're in the scene and then they fade out and then it kind of loops and they fade back in again. I'm just going to press Control Z just to undo that scale. Um, with the particle emitter selected, uh, another thing you can do is if you come up to scale randomness, obviously these are all the same size now. Uh, if we bring up the scale slightly and then introduce some random randomness to it, they'll have particles of different sizes, so they'll fade in and out at different rates, um, and they'll just add it, just add a kind of a bit to it. And then if we just click render, render image, so you see now our particles are in the scene. So that's the actual scene done and set up. Um, just to go a bit further, I guess like extra credit, if we go back into the world tab and just reduce this even further, just to just to about there, just so it really looks like it's a sunset. That'll make us get the reflections on here. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just get rid of this completely, but I think sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.05, so you've got some detail in the background, but the main focus is in the middle here. Um, with the inner icosphere selected, if you wanted to, uh, you could go back over to the shader editor and just increase the strength. That gives a bit more of a sort of intense emission. Now, if you want this to animate and rotate, which is something that I did, I had it going up and down and rotating. Um, just for this scene, I'm just going to make him rotate. I'm going to select the outer icosphere and then hold down shift and select the inner icosphere. And you can see that that's got a lighter orange uh, around it. That just means it's my active object. I can press control P and then parent object and keep the transform. So that just means now if I rotate the inner icosphere, the outer one will go with it. Um, but if I wanted to, I could still rotate the outer one uh, independently. Um, but for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inner icosphere and at frame one, set uh, a keyframe for the rotation by going to I, uh, by hovering over, pressing I, rotation. I'm going to click here, go to the end, and then press RZ359, and then press I, and then set the rotation. And then I'm going to press uh, T, and then select linear. So you'll see now that that rotates on its axis within this full 300 frames it'll turn around uh, in one and it should loop so as it goes around gets to frame 300 and then that carries on spinning you can see the water jumped um, I'm not quite sure how we make the water loop uh, so that will loop obviously the water uh, does jump back there probably is a way to make the ocean loop it isn't something I've managed to figure out yet 
What you could do though is have um, maybe at frame 350, you could keyframe the time at 0 0.5, and then at the end of the frame, it'll kind of cheat it and it'll, it'll make it go back in time. But at the end, if we get rid of the keyframe of one and put that back to zero, and then press I, you'll see that it'll move, but then it'll it'll kind of go back on itself, which you might not want. Um, but now the animation will just be a seamless loop. So you'll see that here the water uh, is moving one direction, and then it goes back the other direction. And then at frame 300, the animation loops and it's seamless now, which uh, is something you might want. And it's seamless with the particles as well, because they fade out perfectly and then fade back in again. So they all fade out and then they fade back in. So that's now a seamless uh, loop. So you can go to render, kind of render image. We've got our particles in there. We've got nice reflections in the ground. And um, you might think that this is a bit too bright. So you can either reduce the strength of it here or keep it really bright and then reduce the uh, intensity of the bloom effect. Uh, but I mean, that's completely up to you. Uh, what I did in my last scene is I added in two sun lamps as well. Um, just brought that up. Uh, pressed RR to go into trackball rotation. Um, kind of rotated it so it's kind of here in the side there. Then I, um, in the light, I made this one kind of blue, reduce the strength there, press shift D, bring this over, rotate it, and I made this one orange, and that kind of gives a bit of a contrasting uh, light, which you might want, and then gives some interesting shadows, um, so yeah, you can play around with that, and then to render this out as an animation, what you could do is you can come up to the output properties, set uh, an area on your desktop or in a folder where you want the rendered animation to go. And as long as this is 30 frames a second, that's frame 300, you can put PNG uh, RGB, and then press render, and then render animation, and I'll render out uh, an image sequence for you to compile into an animation. To kind of make the scene pop a bit more if you do want to, um, if you don't like this kind of like flat look, you could, in, you could uh, make this metallic. Um, and I'll have this like uh, the metallic look on it. Uh, you might want to then bring down the roughness to make it a bit more of a shinier metal. Kind of like this. Um, and then maybe get rid of the bump altogether or have it, but just reduce the strength. Maybe to about there. Uh, and then one thing that we can do to really make the scene pop is if we come under the uh, render properties and come down here to color management, we can uh, under look set this to sort of high contrast, uh, medium high contrast, very high contrast. Uh, and that kind of just adds kind of a fit like a nice dynamic filter to it almost. Um, so then if we rendered this out now, uh, we played it through, hit render, render image. So you see now that we've got the kind of the orb in the middle is reflecting quite nicely off this metallic and then we've got the um, particles which are reflecting in the water. But yeah, that's everything. If you like this video, it would be great if you could hit the like button to let me know. Leave a comment if you think you're going to follow this tutorial and you can share that with me on social media with my links below. And if you want the project files for this, uh, they are available on my Patreon along with the files for all my other tutorials. Uh, again, the link for that is in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!